Tom Sturgill. He said, hello, Chuck, Charles and Neil. He's in Florida. General relativity tells us that gravity is not a force, but a reaction of space-time to mass. Okay. Quantum theory tells us there may be parallel universes. Instead of dark energy, might we be seeing the effect of the mass of these other universes on our space time. Damn, we got badass. What yeah, a man. great Patreon. question to wild. start. Man. That's excellent. All right. Hey, that's yeah. a well thought out question. Yeah, it is. Wait, wait, does that mean we have to like up our game if that's who's watching our show? Yeah. How, how do you want me to phrase this? <laughs> or, 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 is it, no, or is it that there's another astrophysicist out there just like, let's see them deal with this. <laughs> Get these a-holes to see if they really know what they're talking about. Okay. <laughs> so start with the idea that is, is right. gravity really a force? I want right. to hear what right. you think no, about that. that's wonderful. Uh, Tom, you're absolutely right that the general theory of relativity is a supersedent theory that covers, uh, includes, I should say, Isaac Newton's original universal theory of gravity. And that is that on small scales, like scales of the Earth, scales of a solar system, for example, the, you cannot tell the small difference. Small things. Like right. the solar system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you cannot tell the difference between acceleration and the curvature of space-time gravity. Gotcha. So they will look almost exactly the same. And it, they should look exactly the same on very small scales. So there have been experiments done to show whether or not gravity like, is a true force or it is a truly a curvature of space-time. And so far, the two of them follow that so-called equivalence principle. So, so it's both. It, it right. is both on, on the, the scales. Circumstantially. Right, in the circumstances that we are. Circumstantially, so they're both. the exceptions come in extreme environments when you're not looking at sort of Earth-like or, or local environments. One example is a black hole, right. right? Where you might indeed have a circumstance where you can tell the difference between a gravitational activity, curves, curvature of space-time gravitational activity, and a force that measures out exactly like that curvature. But so, how much of this is just semantics? Like, who cares whether it's curvature or Newtonian? Oh. If it, it accelerates an object, it, right. and let that just be the force. Right. Why are we even bickering over this? It matters because when we are trying to understand these extreme situations, such as a black hole or the beginning of the universe, there are subtle differences that do come into account, and you have to take them in t into account in order to get the science right. Okay. Otherwise, you get the wrong answer. That get the wrong oh, answer. Oh, very good. Right. Okay. So, so but, but then we 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 learn if you take physics class and yes. chemistry about these other forces: electromagnetic, yes. the weak nuclear force, the yes. strong nuclear, nuclear force. force. Yes. And then you know we add gravity as a fourth force there. But right. you're saying we shouldn't add gravity. The problem is that gravity is creating that very strange boundary condition. The you know, standard model about particles that we use, you know, the quarks and the leptons and mm -hmm. things like that, do not include a particle that moves gravity around. So if gravity is a fundamental force, there should exist a particle. We expect there to be. Uh -huh, called a graviton. On, based because, on our understanding. Because all other forces force. have these mediating particles. particles. So a graviton must be detected, but. Oh, wait, hang on. So what propagates the electromagnetic force? The photon. And what propagates the weak force? The W and Z particles. That, that's obvious. <laughs> and what, what propagates the strong, strong force? force. Gluons. 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 So there ought to be a keeping in the tradition of this sort of standard model of particles and their associated forces, the gravity should have a particle, a particle associated, associated with, with it. it. And what would that be? The graviton. 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 Yes, okay. that's right. Mm. Photon. Gluon, That's gluon right. graviton, graviton, and the vector intermediate boson. vector bosons. So, so now yes. let me ask you this though: sure. uh, photon has no mass, right? Correct. Okay. No, none of the. And no, does the a gluon ohms. have a, no. a mass? Gluons do not have mass either. How about Y and Z? In, actually, the W and Z particles I mean, and Z. do have mass. They yeah, have mass? that's yes. there. You go. What? That's, so what? that is the Tell fascinating us why that, part. What's going on about that? These particles are still homework. being studied. <laughs> We're trying to figure out what they are, and, and well. You know what? Maybe the concept of mass is is in itself worth talking about for a moment because mass and energy are equivalent. Right. Mm -hmm. You can switch back and forth between Absolutely. them. Absolutely. So when we say we have a massless particle, right. right? We're not saying that it has nothing. We're saying that it can carry energy which can be converted into mass right. under well, the yeah. right conditions. Right. Right. So a photon, for example, can have as much energy as a baseball. Of Some course. of the most powerful photons. Right. But you they won't Measure on a scale. A baseball 
thrown by a pitcher. Yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> not just a baseball. <laughs> yeah, that too. Well, e equals mc squared, right? <laughs> Implicit in yes. your statement, whether it's, right. it's a baseball thrown at ninety miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this huge amount of stuff that's there, even though there is no mass. Gotcha. So, so given so, that, so, so, one of the mm. the mysteries of the standard model and how our subatomic universe works is indeed what has mass and why, and what doesn't have mass and why. Right. And, and so, can you call mm-hmm. energy potential mass? You could. You could yes. call it that. Yes. Okay. But what happens now? We have to bring in Tom's concept of quantum physics. Mm-hmm. Right. General relativity and quantum mechanics have a real hard time connecting with each other. That when you try to use these ideas of particles to explain gravity or the motion of things, you get stuck. The theory, the math doesn't quite match. And so this speculation that Tom has about, hey, is a black hole which has general relativity, uh, could it be affected by quantum physics and this idea of, in this case, the many worlds interpretation? Could it be? It could, but the math doesn't show it yet. Wow. So this is, a, this is actually a frontier that we're trying to wonder. Uh, some folks have speculated that you could actually use quantum physics to communicate within black holes. So you go from the interior of one black hole and be able to transfer to the interior of another black hole. Right. But it still wouldn't translate out into say, our how universe. How would you ever find out? Right. Because you can't get any of the right. information out so, of the black hole. So the math works in these speculative what ways. What a black hole? <laughs> as far as we know, right? The cosmic fight club. <laughs> <laughs> Never get mentioned. We don't talk about the event horizon. Yeah. So <laughs> fight club. Stay tuned, Tom, is like is what I would say. Uh, odds are what you just speculated is not the case, but mathematically people are still working on still ways working to on. make it possible. And then we have to figure it out. We have to test it to see if we can make these predictions actually manifest in observation. Do you think the day will come where we'll discover a graviton? Yes. We're pretty close already. Okay. The, the reason we're close is because of the gravitational wave detectors right. that we found. Right. Uh, there are some people making calculations and saying, well, if gravitational waves actually do exist, which we have now which shown they do. they do, then there must be a graviton. Right. Uh, so the implication that gravitons exist is there. Now it's a matter of actually detecting one. And that is the bugaboo. That's the so... graviton is so... Uh, low energy, right? And there's so many of them right. that being able to pick one out or to have enough data to show that these particles actually exist is extremely difficult. That is wild. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Wow. I wish I spoke math. <laughs> <laughs> you do just fine. <laughs> Thank you.